You have this great take on making heroes out of ordinary people. Yeah, yeah, that is my thing. I really have noticed that as I've worked on the whale world, I do get a lot of time now to be around the people that I was a fangirl of, right? So we, we've we discovered a lot about humpback whales and our region, and it's become an important place that the whole status of humpback whales in the North Pacific is different because of the work that we've done over the past 10 years and laws around crabbing and ship movement and patterns in the North have all changed as a result of our work. But what I've noticed in working with many scientists is they start from a place of negativity sometimes when we talk about something. And what I learned from being a volunteer around the world was what usually happens in research projects is this parachute science where a group of scientists go in and they're very passionate about the animals and they go and they live in a little house and they study the whales and they live on rice and beans and they get really bonded and they collect great data and then they take it to a conference, they share it, maybe they publish it in a science magazine and that's it. Then they come back five years, 10 years later, and often the place has been ravaged. The whales are hurt. The community doesn't have a connection with them. And the community never really even knew they were there. So what we did, every team member, including myself, lived with local people as guests in their homes, as parts of their family. It was more expensive, but it was important to separate out and to prioritize being with the community and supporting them. And by doing it that way, the community became much more aware of what we were doing and much more connected. So this is the experience I was having, was having this great, wonderful, beautiful time with the community where people were slowly getting more interested in whales and becoming passionate. And then I would go to science meetups, like conferences and People were talking about the, the fate of this and that endangered species and what was happening. And they were so sad. And the problem was the people, the local people or national interests or some combination or international were hurting the animals in the environment. And they, I would talk to people about, well, what do you do with the local community and usually they didn't do much. They may do a workshop or a presentation, but there wasn't this real engagement that was deep. And in and so I knew we were onto something that what we had to do was to prioritize the people and prioritize the community. And if we wanted to do something to take care of this little group of humpback whales that we discovered do come here as a destination to calve and to mate, we had to do something for the people. And so my project turned its back on the whales to a certain extent. And nowadays we spend very little time on the water and we spend a lot of time hanging out with people on the stoop, in their homes, in little meetings, and talking about how can we help, just like we started out. And after many, many years of starting whale ecotourism in the region, expanding it out, and Zihuatanejo, Ixtapa, these bigger cities have picked it up, now Acapulco, and little communities along the way have all picked up whale watching as well. Now we train 80 guides, we're an authorized whale watch region. But a lot of what we do these days doesn't have anything to do with whales. We support cooking classes. We support guided walking tours. We support building community centers. And these are things that the community said they wanted. After we'd been doing this work for a while and we had built up this relationship that was like, right. I, I'd been here for a long time at this point and people knew that we were neutral and well, we were neutral in that we weren't going to be allying with one person or another specifically in the community. And we weren't going to be going chasing after sort of a powerful or influential thing that we were truly our hearts were in it for the good of everybody. People began to trust us. And then after five years of studying the whales, we had a community meeting and said, OK, so now we finished our five year study. We figured out about the whales. We figured out that there's some whales here and we can support an ecotourism, but 
it's not a lot of whales. And what do you think we should do next? How can we help? And the women spoke up. They really came to this meeting and said, we want to be involved and we don't want to be captains and we don't want to go to sea, but we want to do more. And the kids gave us a freaking PowerPoint presentation, basically, about what they wanted, which was in-depth, regular science and nature classes. And I mean, how can you say no to that? And so we we responded with, we started a nature club in Siwatanejo, and we started one in Barra de Potosí. And then we also help the women become walking tour guides, and we teach cooking classes in their homes. And I got to share with visitors to the area opportunities that I had always enjoyed so much to just go into a four generation home in the village and make tortillas on a comal and just chit chat and hang out and get to see what life is like behind the doors. And uh, to me, those were some of the best experiences of my life. And now I get to support women in the village who get to share the heart of their home with people who come in and want to experience it. And just like whales are the conversation piece, but it's not really about whales. It's about connecting people with each other and experiencing their own interconnection and the bigger world around them. It's not about the food that you cook. It's the, the, the comal and the tortilla is the reason that you're coming together. But what's happening is you're being in a relationship with a family for a while. And what we facilitate is that the women aren't the, they're not doing the Julia Childs thing. Like you're doing the dishes too. And you may be clumsy with the masa, but you're going to keep trying until you make a tortilla that works. And that's something that I've learned along the way too, is for me, it's about whales and Mexico because this is what I love and I love building community, but this could be about anything. We've talked about that, that this could be about a food bank. It could be about banana slugs or trees or handicrafts. Um, My cocktail is whales and Mexico and connecting people because that's what I love. And I love a big juicy question. And the question is how do you connect and inspire people to work together for a more healed world. And that's a question that never gets old to me. And one of the suggestions I've gotten that seems to be working along the way is that by connecting people together, so setting everybody up for a win-win so that they're the champions is the way to do it. So coming in with an approach to say, people are going to do the wrong thing. They're just going to take advantage. People here are lazy. Anytime I've noticed people say the people are this way, things go off course. And so coming at it from a place of curiosity and knowing I'll never understand what it's like to be from here. I speak Spanish, I live here, but I will never really understand what it's like to walk in somebody's shoes here. But I can every day say, I don't understand what it's like to be from here, even though I'm trying continuously. I know I could leave and I could go and do something else and you can't, but I have empathy and and I believe in you and I see the good in you. And I believe that if we set you up to win for you be financially successful you have a great relationship with the whales, you have a successful business that you feel proud of, then people are set up to be champions and heroes of the ocean. And people are doing that. They are in our area. Our community of guides are the frontline defenders and protectors of the whales. We have a community vigilance program where we work with the fishermen. They have these handouts that they take and they give to people who are not being appropriate with the whales. And they have all of this information and they work very, very well together so that there's never too many boats around the whales and that people are informed. So because people see themselves as I am somebody who is in charge of protecting the whales and that makes my life better. I don't want to be a policeman. I mean, so I'm very happy that I don't have to go out there and do that. I wouldn't be good at that job and it would drain me, but by, and I can't be out there in all the places all the time anyway. Mm. 
All right. Well, that's just about as good a synopsis of, of, you know, starting one place and ending up another and all along the way, creating wins for everyone. That is just such a beautiful story. 